All right, this is going to be the first of two videos. In this first video, I'm going to discuss the features that I built into this fountain pen box. And in the second video, I will discuss the things that I would change having lived with it for a little while and uh, would, would probably change about the design. But for this, for this first video, I want to show uh, six or seven features that I designed and, and originally I had had all of these materials stored in a, a shoe box and they kind of clinked around and so I wanted something a little bit more solid. The, the first feature is not very exciting but it is uh, a series of magnets. There's three of them, one, two, and three and they're corresponding magnets in the front of the box but when you drop the lid it, it locks in place. The second feature is this clamshell hinge. Uh, probably something that I would change and I'll discuss in the next video but when I had originally designed the box, I wanted this clamshell hinge in place to keep this drawer uh, from, from coming out. But as it's designed now, it has that, it has that hinge. The, the third feature is not very exciting, but it is this, this sort of lip construction. I'd never done it before, and so I wanted to include it in this particular project. And it, it turned out all right for a first try. But if you look at the construction of the box, of the, box the top of the box, rests on the bottom and is flush and the only thing that really keeps it from sliding is this lip that runs the perimeter. But now we get to the inside of the box and there are three utility trays. The first tray here is designed to hold uh, you know, a number of five milliliter vials and these just hold ink samples. You can see a little bit further down I have a, a cardboard insert with circles cut out that hold the vials in place. And these are the vials that you either purchase online through, say, a popular fountain pen venue like Goulet Pens, or that you exchange with fountain pen uh, network members in the ink exchange program. Uh, but I have these here. And maybe a couple things I'd, I'd change about this, but I'll talk about that in the next video. The second utility tray is, is built very similar to the first, but it has some of the paraphernalia like a bulb, a bulb hinge, uh, a medical syringe to, to inject ink into some of the cartridge converters, and you know, things like silicon grease, but just holds some of the other stuff that's in the box. And then the last tray ended up not really being a tray at all. I started running out of material as I was finishing up, but it's, it's these, it, you can kind of see that it's two boxes here and they're designed to hold these three by five cards, which are the ink writing samples so whenever I receive a new ink, I will take time to write with it and note its drying time, feathering characteristics, saturation, nib creep, uh, things like that. So this tray is here is designed to hold 500 index cards. There's room for a second one over there if we were to come to that, but it should probably work for a while. The next feature in the box are, is the, uh, the glass bottle holders. And this was one of the problems I had with the shoe box was these glass bottles would always clink around even if I kept them in the original boxes they came in. And so I, I built these uh, to, be, to be padded. And so they, the bottles, bottles barely move, if at all. And they're, they come in two sizes. A member of the Fountain Pen Network had sort of posted all of the sizes from the various manufacturers. And so I put them into a spreadsheet and, and grouped them into sort of two groups. Uh, the larger group fits in a box like this with a 2.5 inch uh, measurement on the inside on the inside on the inside perimeter and the second smaller group like this is a 2 inch by 2 inch by 2 inch by 2 inch box uh, like that. You can see I didn't spend a lot of time on the outside because I don't expect to really see these boxes here. Um, but that's uh, that, that's what I did there, and they and they they do come out. If I you know if I were to get another bottle like this 50 milliliter Mont Blanc, I could take these two out, put in another box like this, and just slide it right there in in place. But in the meantime, they're they're set up like this. You can take these pieces out, and just to see the construction of the box a little further. see that this portion of the tray is, is lined and underneath is where this tray, you know, this, this pen box rests. If you were to look at the construction of this, 
I, I built three sort of skinny boxes and I put one here, one here, and one here. And then there's a vacant space underneath and that's where this box itself rests. So this is where I put the pens. This is the last feature of the box. The, the hinge here have, have magnets that, that keep the two pieces together. When you open it up, it reveals two, two trays. Uh, this top tray is suede lined. Uh, these dividers are just balsa wood pieces underneath and the suede's glued over those and they hold the pens there. Uh, the second tray is of similar construction, slightly different color, um, but it, uh, it holds the pens in place. If you were to flip this piece over, there's a lip around here such that when you push, when you put this tray on top of the second, it locks in place. And there's a little pull tab right here to, to get the drawer to pull out. But those are the those are the main features of the box. Uh, again, look down below to to see the tutorials for the the clamshell hinge construction, the the padded box, and then how to make these individual boxes. And then I'll on the second video discuss uh, the things that I would change if if I were to undertake this type of project again.